the topic of my presentation is about the prospects of using AI in general in medicine, this case in a reconstructive surgery. We'll do the simultaneous uh, uh, breast reconstruction, delayed breast reconstruction. We're using implants, uh, own flaps, uh, uh, tram arm flaps, uh, uh, free uh, uh, CA and deeper flaps. We widely uh, used um, uh, the back arm muscle for reconstruction, sometimes perforant t dep and, and cap arm flaps are being popular. Uh, there are even recommendations of foreign colleagues, uh, guidelines, telling at what stage what reconstruction may and should be made and how frequently the implants are to be replaced. And if we have an expander after mastectomy, considering the chemotherapy, chemotherapy and radiotherapy, uh, when we must um, reconstruct uh, the areola and the nipple. And the only the uh, thing is that in Russia we don't have any guidelines uh, on kinds and times of breast reconstructions. It doesn't say when we should do it, when we should uh, replace the expander for implant. Uh, we're mainly using our own experience and colleagues' opinion. And we all have both good results of breast reconstruction uh, bad results exist as well, and uh, complications are possible. I believe any reconstruction surgeon did have such uh, uh, cases. Um, the general data internationally says that uh, the complications are frequent when using both implants and flaps. How can this problem be resolved? Uh, we all thought uh, uh, what to do. And of course, we got upset if we encountered complications. and. Uh, uh, trying to find out whether everything was done correctly and when thinking what could be done better. Our team considered what can be made. So we've decided to collect all the kinds and uh, uh, features of the patient, load all the info into the computer, and the output should be the advice on the kind of reconstruction to be used to minimize the complications. In the year 19, in October, the president of Russia issued an order on AI development in Russia in every sphere, including medicine. Well, we've used AI in uh, reconstructive surgery. What is AI? It's a machine, it's a computer, that's software created by a human. Uh, those programs were trained. Uh, we've, learned, we've taught these programs to think, uh, and the result, the output provided is something that um, is good for us. De facto, artificial intellect uh, is a software that has to be taught. It's called machine learning. Uh, there are neural networks inside, and a certain result is provided. At present, uh, the doctors uh, of uh, reconstructive surgery, we use the classical method. We usually have a patient. The patient has certain data. Um, his features. We have a clinical standard, and we are using the guidelines, the standards. We follow them, and we get the classical result. This result may be good or bad, but we work on the basis of the uh, standards. As for the machine learning, it's done in a different way. We have certain data of the patient or about the patient. We have many results earlier obtained with our errors, with our experience. All that is loaded into the computer, into the software, and the software and the program uh, provides for us a certain personified uh, standard. That's uh, 
what wouldn't have been obtained if we used the classical methods. How does it actually happen? We take certain historic data. How do we teach the machine? We take the data from any patient. We prepare this data. That's a very labor-consuming work. And then uh, this data is marked. It's subdivided between the good and bad data. Then it's loaded into the machine. The machine is uh, taught. So then the machine is giving us a certain model. We assess it and check the result, whether it's um, satisfactory or not. If it's a bad result, uh, we re-prepare the data, get back, and uh, uh, improve it. If finally we are satisfied with the result, we create a model uh, which is stored in the machine uh, or in the computer memory. We can put it this way. If we get the new data of the patient, prepare this data, load it into the computer, we have a forecast model in the machine. And on the basis of that, the machine will provide us a result that will help our activities. The machine will not suggest a certain result. It will simply give us the percentage uh, of probable complications. Artificial intellect is widely used abroad. In Russia, uh, have a look at one of the uh, trials at breast cancer abroad. AI is used at, say, for example, reading the uh, mammograms and x-rays. And then there's a less false positive and false negative results. AI presented, uh, proved its um, precision, high efficacy. Also, there's less load on the second expert. Let's work for humans. Well. I was very interested to see when I got prepared uh, uh, for this uh, presentation that AI was uh, used at allocation of bio subtypes of uh, breast cancer, for example, a subdivision of luminal uh, type A and B. In Russia, uh, there are some trials as well, like service cells in 13 entities of Russia. Uh, there's a software that is reading the X-ray, the X-rays, and uh, provides the results. It proved its efficacy as well. In particular, it determines whether the tumor is malignant or not, and. Uh, uh, this uh, research is not aimed at uh, replacement of experts, but rather at assistance uh, to the experts. In many regions, they lack uh, good radiologists who would uh, um, do be good in a reading of um, mammograms and CTs. In our oncology clinic of St. Petersburg, uh, uh, we also conducted our research for yet at an initial stage together with Emercom Clinic and uh, Military Medical Academy. Uh, we uh, studied uh, 320 cases of breast cancer with earlier reconstructive surgery. In each patient, we've allocated 57 features. All the features were considered at this stage, uh, height, uh, weight, age, uh, um, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, neoadjuvant, adjuvant um, uh, therapy, all the complications at each um, uh, stage. Let me mention that um, it's a very important stage of data preparation. Uh, it's a very labor-consuming work, and uh, it has to be done very precisely because even one error may make the results of our study much worse. That's uh, the kind of reconstruction uh, surgery that we considered, all of them, besides the uh, flap. Uh, we've uh, processed this info preliminary statistics. Uh, uh, pointed uh, that this is a feasible method, 
and some most important features were singled out, like age is a very important um, feature. Ladies after 60 have more negative results uh, after reconstruction than uh, ladies under 60. Weight, body weight was an important feature. If they weigh more than 80, uh, their complications were, fre were more frequent as well. Um, experience of a surgeon was of importance. Uh, surgeons with uh, more experience had less um, uh, complications. Um, the machine determined the significant features that may impact the result. Here are 22 features from among 57. Uh, the output was the algorithms we've received. The machine provided not a result, but the algorithms, and the ideal situation when all these algorithms coincide. The first algorithm uh, decision, here is a tree of decisions, it says that um, in this case, AI could not predict correctly. In this group, in the, tra the training selection, uh, in 18 cases, only six were a success, 12 were no success. Control selection uh, failures were not mentioned, and only seven cases were no success. Um, so this is the algorithm, the decision tree um, pointed at the fact that the radiotherapy is a significant factor and at the choice of reconstruction, the necessity of a radiotherapy should be considered. Flap should be considered as well. That's a kind of um, surgery that uh, causes many complications. Here is another algorithm, a random forest. This algorithm worked better. Uh, better forecast was um, provided. Um, we've obtained some positive trend. Um, AI determined the relevant features um, and the level of their impact expressed in percent. What were the difficulties we've encountered when carrying out um, this uh, study? First of all, we didn't have enough info. AI requires not three or four hundred cases, uh, but in ideal five or ten million. So we'll continue uh, collecting data in our database. Um, collection of information and the processing of um, uh, the uh, patient histories. Um, this has to be true to life, and, and we need not only the good results, but complications as well. Human factor, a lot depends on the expert who prepares the metrics and uh, trains it. A good software um, expert is necessary to obtain a good result. Now, on the second uh, stage, we prepare 480 cases more. I believe um, in future we'll be able to provide bigger results. So in conclusion, I'd like to mention that usage of um, AI in uh, reconstructive uh, plastic surgery uh, requires more studies. Um, and uh, in future, it will enable to create an algorithm of choice of the optimal surgery with minimum complications and best aesthetic results. Um, carrying out of this idea requires professional fairness, common efforts, and a common database. Thank you for the attention.